Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaican News in Review Alleged gunman shot dead during attack at Burlam security team in Mandeville. An alleged gunman was shot dead and a firearm seized during an attack on the Burlam security team at a distribution center in Grey Ground on the outskirts of Mandeville. The deceased has not yet been identified. Reports are that about 7 p.m., a group of gunmen attacked the car team at the center. An alarm was raised and a shootout reported the ensued and one of the attackers was fatally shot. This is the latest in a series of attacks on vehicles and cars attached to the company. Meantime, Member of Parliament for Manchester Central Rhoda Crawford, who visited the scene, had condemned gun attack on the parish. She, however, lauded the security forces for their quick action. I spoke with the manager and some of the security personnel at the gate and what I'm gathering is that the swift action of the security at the main gate in that they, they responded by using the proper protocols to trigger you know, security backup. So once they had done what they needed to, to do, the police and the military got here quickly. What I'm very happy about is that no member of staff or any of the security personnel were injured in the attack. And I hope this sends a signal to those who are bent on creating mayhem in our constituency, in our parish and in our country, that the, your end can be very fatal. I want to encourage the staff members not to panic. And I want to really commend the swift action of the, the members of the you know, Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force, and also the security staff here for their bravery and very swift action. MP Homer Davis says St. James has endured three days of coming to terror amid surging murders in the parish at the weekend. Three days of coming to terror. That's how Member of Parliament for St. James Southern Homer Davis has described the surging criminal activities in the parish over the last few days despite it being under a state of public emergency SOE. Since the measure was reinstated last Friday, at least six people have been shot dead and others wounded in separate incidents. They occurred in Green Pond, Montpelier, Irwin, downtown Montegobe, and Cambridge. Among the deceased are two brothers and a 14-year-old Anchovy High School student, Aldina James. Aldina was killed in Montpelier on Friday while sheltering from rain at a bar. Noting that he knew Aldina personally, Mr. Davis condemned his killing. The MP who visited the school yesterday expressed concern about the level of crime in the parish. Mr. Davis is urging residents to share whatever information they have about the killings with the police. He added that law enforcement officials cannot achieve convictions without adequate evidence, hence citizens must play their parts. 21 years old gets over 28 years in prison for murder robbery of Clarendon Vendor. A 21-year-old Clarendon man was sentenced to over 28 years in prison for the shooting death and robbery of a fruit vendor in Maypen on Valentine's Day. Romeo Fullerton, who pleaded guilty, was sentenced to 16 years imprisonment for robbery aggravation, 23 years and 2 months for possession of a prohibited weapon, and 28 years and 3 months imprisonment for murder. The sentences are to run concurrently. Sentencing was handed down in the Clarendon Circuit Court. Facts are thus about 8.30 p.m. on February 14, 27-year-old Keith McIntosh of Moko in Clarendon was selling fruits in Maypen when he was approached by Fullerton and another man. There was a brief conversation during which he was shot multiple times by Fullerton. As McIntosh fell to the ground, he was robbed of a bag that he had around his neck. The hoodlums escaped from the scene. An investigation by the Maypen Criminal Investigations Branch led to Fullerton being arrested and he was subsequently charged. He made numerous court appearances and later pleaded guilty on April 26 before Justice Anne Marie Lawrence Granger. Mother of Modi siblings identifies bodies in viral video as her children. The mother of the siblings, who were seen in a viral video on social media, being buried in a shallow grave, have confirmed that they are her children. According to the police, 20-year-old Kerit Moody and 22-year-old Kenisha Moody, a brother and sister of Greenfield District, Westmoreland, has been missing since Friday, December 8. Their mother, Stephanie, said in an interview on Sunday afternoon that she saw the viral video and having news in physical marks, she can confirm that those are her children. Yesterday in the after two, somebody sent me a picture so them seed past social media where they might bury them and Mrs. see them, the distraught mother told reporters. The mother said her children called her on Friday 
telling her to pick up $10,000 at a cook shop and that they are going to pick up a package. She is pleading with the public to assist her in locating where they are buried so that she can get their bodies. The viral video on social media shows the bodies of a female and a male in a grave with what appears to be bloodstains on their clothes and a man using a shovel to throw dirt on them. Reports from the Black River Police are that about 7.15 a.m., Kerrick and Kenesha were last seen leaving a cook shop in Grangehill in the parish. Their mode of dress at the time they went missing is unknown and they have not been seen since. St. Andrew's Central Division lists for wanted men. Detectives assigned to the St. Andrew's Central Division have listed four men as wanted for several crimes committed across the parish. They are Nicholas Williams, otherwise called Pooh Bear, a 20-year-old of University Crescent, Kingston, who is wanted for shooting with intent. Roshan Douglas, otherwise called Rush, of Garden Hill District in St. Andrew, who is wanted for murder. Ashani McKenzie, otherwise called Mens, a 27-year-old of Anderson Road, Kingston, who is wanted for murder. Calvin Simon, otherwise called CG, a 19-year-old of Garden Hill District in St. Andrew, who is wanted for murder. The men are urged to turn themselves into the halfway tree police immediately. The police are also reminding members of the public that it is a criminal offense to harbor a fugitive. Investigators are encouraging persons to continue sharing information to aid in the investigations by calling the halfway three police at 876-926-8184, Crime Stop at 311, the NIB tip line at 811, the police 119 numbers or the nearest police station. Electrician on drug charges remanded. An electrician charged in connection with the seizure of cocaine, valued at $10.2 million, was remanded when he appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Monday. Andrew Walcott, 36, of Clarkston, Manchester, is charged with possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, trafficking cocaine, and possession of criminal property. When Walcott appeared before senior parish judge, Yvette Wentworth Miller, the matter was postponed until Wednesday. It is alleged that about 2.30 p.m. on November 18, detectives from the Narcotics and the St. Catherine South Division were on operation in Old Harbour when they intercepted a Nissan motor car driven by Walcott. During a search of the vehicle, two rectangular parcels containing cocaine weighing about 2 kilograms were discovered. The detectives also reported discovered $10,000 inside the vehicle. The car, the drugs, and cash were seized and Walcott was arrested. Cabby accused of causing death of five people granted seven million bail. Delroy Rodney, the 47-year-old cabby, who has been charged with five counts of causing death by dangerous driving, was on Tuesday granted bail in the sum of seven million dollars. Rodney made his second court appearance before the Westmoreland Circuit Court on Tuesday morning. Attorneys Lambert Johnson and Faith Summon, who are presenting the taxi operator, had initiated a bail application last Wednesday when the case was moved to the High Court. But due to time constraints, the matter was pushed back to Tuesday. The prosecution objected to bail for Rodney on the premises that he is a flight risk and it was alleged that he fled the scene. In Rodney's defense, attorney Johnson argued that the accused did not flee the scene but had rather sought medical help before later in the evening contacting the police to make arrangements to surrender. Justice Day suggested that the accused turn himself in within a reasonable time. This is a factor that carries great weight in a man's favor for bail, the judge stressed. The judge added that Rodney also expressed regret in his actions that resulted in the death of the victims. In granting bail, High Court Judge Justice Courtney Day said he, Rodney, has good conduct, no previous conviction or criminal conviction in driving. In reaching the bail sum of $7 million, the judge said three sureties can come forward. Justice Day said the court also had to consider that it will take at least six months for the fast to be completed and for a trial date to be set. In granting bail, the following conditions were imposed. A stop order was placed on the accused. He was ordered to surrender his travel documents, report to the Brooklyn Police Station in the parish three times per week between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., and he is not allowed to drive during the period of time he is on bail. Rodney was also advised not to discuss the case with the witness family nor the sole survivor in the crash. 18 prisoners safe in custody after St. Anne crash police report. The police are reporting that the 18 prisoners who escaped serious injuries in a three vehicle crash in St. Anne on Saturday are in safe custody. The six police officers who were transporting them also escaped serious injuries. 
Lawmen say the truck transporting the prisoners reportedly crashed into an Audi motor car, which was traveling in the opposite direction along the runaway Bay Main Road near the Salem Baptist Church about 9 a.m. The Audi then reported they hit another vehicle. Reporters understand that the prisoners were being transported from the St. James Police Division and are now in Kingston. Saint and father shot dead while three-year-old daughter nursing gunshot wounds. A man was shot and killed and his three-year-old daughter was shot and wounded by unknown assailants in their community in St. Anne over the weekend. Dead is 40-year-old Arlanda Atkinson, otherwise called Juno, a contractor of Lilyfield District in Bambo. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that about 8.15 p.m. on Saturday, Atkinson and his daughter were in his vehicle when armed men approached and opened gunfire at them. The police were summoned and on arrival, Atkinson was seen with gunshot wounds to the upper body and his daughter wounded. They were transported to hospital where Atkinson was pronounced dead and his daughter was treated and released. Business operators in Kingston Central urged to revisit security measures following robbery at KFC. Business operators in Kingston Central are being urged to revisit their security measures to ensure the safer movement and security of cash. The appeal follows a robbery at the KFC restaurant on King Street in downtown Kingston. Police reported that about 11 a.m., gunmen entered the establishment and stole over $100,000 in cash from the food store. Staff and customers were also robbed of cell phones and other personal belongings. Speaking to reporters, Commanding Officer for the Division Superintendent Bersford Williams said in light of the robbery, businesses must take proper steps to secure their establishments. This, he said, is especially important as thieves seeks to increase their criminal activity during the festive season. Superintendent Williams also urges citizens to come forward if they can assist the police in identifying the KFC robbers. He lamented that in several instances, robbers are taken into custody but are eventually released due to citizens' refusal to confirm their identities. The superintendent hopes that this problem will not persist and that Jamaicans will be more forthcoming in helping to put perpetrators behind bars. We are constantly trying to build dialogue with the business community, encouraging them that where they are in possession of large sum of cash, where their business is surrounded around large cash, that they need to visit their or relook at their security arrangement. Whatever those are, whether during business hours or during the movement of cash from their businesses to the bank, um, so that we can secure persons involved or one on premises as best as possible. So we continue to encourage persons to relook at their security arrangement and to make adjustments where they think it's necessary. We are hoping the perpetrators are listening and will come forward. Importantly, though, we are encouraging persons to get involved in the process so that we can bring to justice those who are involved. We note that in the past, where we have identified suspects, persons have failed to support the process. And so, in many instances, those perpetrators have had to be released. This we know will kind of embolden them, and so we continue to ask our citizens where they know of suspects to assist us so we can bring these persons to justice. This, in this case, um, the appeal is no different. Elderly woman perishes in majestic garden fire. An elderly woman lost her life after a fire destroyed the top floor of an apartment building in Majestic Garden in Kingston on Monday morning. The woman has so far only been identified as Miss Pat. It is believed that the elderly woman, who lives alone, was cooking when the neighbor saw smoke coming from her apartment. Despite the neighbors quickly rushing to the woman's aid, they were unable to rescue her due to the fierceness of the flames one witness stated. After firefighters extinguished the blaze, the woman's burnt remains were found among the debris. Opposition concern about number of murders committed in St. James despite implementation of SOE. There is heightened concern over the number of murders being committed in St. James, despite the declaration of a state of public emergency in St. James. There have been enhanced security measures in St. James since November 23rd. The parish is among six areas where the measures were reinstated on Friday. On Saturday, a day after the security measure was reintroduced, two maids were killed in Green Pond. On Sunday, another man was reportedly shot and killed on Orange Street in downtown Montego Bay, while that same afternoon, Gunmen shot and killed a man in Irwin. By the same evening, gunmen struck near Cambridge. 
Opposition Speaker on National Security Peter Bondin says the surge in violent crimes in the parish is indicative that the routine use of SOEs is ineffective. According to Mr. Bontin, the security measure is a public relations stunt. He is calling for effective crime prevention measures to be implemented. St. Andrew's Sound Police intensify operational activities on the SOE. The St. Andrew's Sound Police see they have stepped up operational activities since the state of public emergency was declared in the division last Friday. Senior Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, head of the division, told reporters that several suspects and persons of interest are on the list of people being sought in connection with serious crimes committed in the division. He said several suspects have fled the division and are hiding out in other parishes of the island due to the operations. One suspect who was being sought for questioning in connection with a murder was captured in Clarendon on the weekend. SSP Ricketts said daily operations will be conducted throughout the holidays to stem gang violence. The police high command had announced that the St. Andrew Sound Police Division was added to the SOE list after it recorded the second highest number of murders across all police divisions with a total of 113. There have been an upsurge in gang violence in the division over the last several weeks. In the meantime, the St. Andrew Sound Police are trying to identify the body of a man found at the Riverton disposal site Monday morning. It's a spirit to reporters that the police have been searching the site after receiving reports that a body had been dumped in the area on the weekend. Investigators suspect that the man was murdered and his body dumped. Here is Stanley's held with millions of dollars at airport charge. A Kingston based here Stanley's was caught smuggling millions of dollars in undeclared cash into the island has been charged. Nicole Simmit of Dennis Avenue, Kingston was charged on the weekend following an investigation by the narcotics police. Miss Simmit, 44, was arrested Friday shortly after she arrived on a flight from England. The cops says they see £16,000 or more than £3 million concealed in her luggage during security checks by customs officers at Norman Mann International Airport. She had failed to declare the cash to immigration. Investigators say Miss Simmit failed to give a satisfactory account of the monies and as a result was taken into custody for breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act. She was questioned soon in the presence of her attorney and later charged with cross-border movement of cash, bringing criminal property into the island of Jamaica, concealing criminal property, conspiracy to conceal criminal property, and possession of criminal property. She is booked to appear before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Wednesday, January 10. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.